Hello there. Clearly it's time for mathematics. Today we are going to do triangles. Not just any triangle. Not just right angle triangles. All triangles. And what we are going to do with them is we're going to find out all sorts of side lengths and measurements and all that sort of thing. Now this is Year 11 Mathematics B, Queensland Mathematics B, and I'm going to go through two lessons worth. And we're going to try not to make any errors because I'm going to go through a fair amount of content here. And I'm just checking, Am I, have I got my right equipment? Yes, I have a very, very nice scientific calculator to play with this afternoon. So that's fantastic. Now, in the old world, we used to deal with things that only involve right angle triangles. For example, Pythagoras' theorem. The idea that c squared being the hypotenuse is equal to a squared plus b squared. We could only ever use that on right angle triangles. I mean, how frustrating is that? You know, life doesn't always come in right angle triangles, does it? The other ones you're used to using with right angle triangles Sine, cos, and tan. Tan being opposite over adjacent. Cos being adjacent over hypotenuse. And sine being opposite over hypotenuse. And you're all thinking, I've just delivered that in an unusual way. I mean, normally we do sokatoa, don't we? Or, or that sort of thing. And then we make up you know, rude sayings so we remember it. And I've just put it in the wrong order, but you're just going to hack it because I'm not re-recording this. Now, importantly guys, this is all right angle triangle only. Today, and the focus of what we're doing is on two rules that you can use for any triangle. These are the sine rule and the cos rule. Now some of you will have seen these rules before and inevitably rejoiced at the life experience of triangles going beyond the right angle in terms of formulas and what we can do with them. And for some of you, this special experience may be the first time you see them. So here we go. Sine rule and cos rule. These things look hideous to start with. But then you realise they're just, they're just really cool. They're all right. You know? It's kind of like that with students, often. Anyway, so sine rule looks something like this. Sine A over A equals sine B over B. You can actually continue that pattern. You can also put equal sine C over C if you really want. And cos rule, C squared is A squared plus B squared take 2AB cos C. And one of the first things that jumps out at me here is you will need to be familiar with a set labelling system that we use in both of these rules. Many of you will already be familiar with it, but I am just going to show you this quickly. So labelling, is that going to be in the reflection? I don't want it in the reflection. Is that going to be out? There we go. Labelling. That'll work. All right. Labelling, so essentially here I'm going to draw any triangle, it's not a right angle, and what we do is we label the sides with lowercase letters. So sides, we use lowercase letters, and for angles we use uppercase. So if this is side A, B, C, I'll just arbitrarily name them. I haven't done that for any particular reason other than I needed a side, sides labelled A, B and C. At each, at each point, the opposite angle is the same letter. So side A is here. Angle A will be opposite over there. Notice uppercase for angle, lowercase for side. And I'll do the same for the others. Lowercase C is here. Uppercase C is the angle, it's in that corner. Lowercase b is over here. Uppercase b will be over here. Okay? So remember that. Uppercase for angle, lowercase for sides. If you're um, 
you really want some practice here do this and if I told you that that's A that's B and perhaps that's C you might want to pause it have a go do that one for yourself Had a bit of time excellent here we go so the solution would be as follows that's big A, so little A being the side will be that side. That's big C. Little C being the side will be there. Little B means it represents the side there, the side length. It's going to be, it means that big B, the angle is going to be opposite it down there. All right? So you do need to be able to do that. So from that, looking back at our rules, when you see these uppercase things, what do they mean? They're angles. So here... That big A, that big B, they're angles. And what are these other little things? Why have we got lowercase letters? They are sides. So these represent side lengths. In turn, Coll's rule is similar. A lot of lowercase letters here, all side lengths. Right? And we have one lone uppercase letter there, all out there. Do you feel sorry for it? How does it feel? Have you ever thought about that? Anyway, so it's an uppercase letter, and so therefore it is an angle. So that tells us what's in here. So if I was to summarise what I'm looking at, the sign rule, you can see the sign rule has two sides, two angles. Therefore, as with most formulas, if we're trying to work one thing out, if we have three bits of information in this formula, we can find out the fourth. So there are two possible uses for the sign rule where we could have three bits of information and we're trying to find the fourth. Right? First use is, well, let's say we had two angles and a side. Two angles and a side we can find the fourth bit of information, which is another side. Right, the second use, well, instead of two angles, we could have two sides and one angle. In this case, what would be the missing thing that we potentially could work out? That's right, it'll be the angle. So we could work out another angle. There's some quirks with that, and we actually don't need to do this in this subject, the case where we use the sine rule to get an angle. I can talk about it briefly. Essentially, there's a situation where if you have two sides and an angle, often there's two triangles you can draw. Uh, it's referred to as the ambiguous case. And it's not a big issue and it's not that complicated. We can work around it. There's a certain rule where um, essentially you can use the rule that sine theta is e equal to the sine 180 take away the theta to find the second solution at any moment in time. For example, sine 30 is equal to sine 150. Think, put any angle there. So sine 15 would be equal to sine 165 sine 80 would be equal to sine 100. You can use that to sort out the ambiguous case, but we're actually not going to do it in this lesson because it's not required. So today, and when I do an example, I'm actually only going to use that one there. That's what we're going to look at today as part of the sine rule. Um, in terms of the cos rule over here, if we evaluate what we've got, one, two, three sides are in it. Oh, I'll do it consistently. I'll write the word three. Three sides, and there's only one lone angle there. So again, there's four pieces of information. From any three, we can find the remaining ones. So, first option, from three sides, we can find an angle. And secondly, if we have two sides and, and uh, the included angle, there's a bit of a quirk with that. 
the angle needs to be the one that connects the two sides. So, you know, if this is your angle, you need those two sides around it. You need the two, the two sides that join together at the angle. So if it's two sides and the included angle, you can find the third side. Both of those cases we're going to do today in an example. Um, quite some fun algebra moving around of the second one. So guys, that's the initial introduction. How far in? 10 minutes, okay, we're doing all right. We should be able to do this in, I don't know, about half an hour. Except I'm gonna start doing some really crazy stuff. And, you know, you may or may not question my sanity doing this. But I'm gonna actually show you how to derive these two rules. So, get rid of the old world. We're done with that. And let's try and prove the sine rule first or the cos rule first. What do you feel like? Hmm. I'm not really quite sure. Maybe we should try the sine rule first because I really can't remember how I'm meant to do that. Blue? What do you feel like? Okay, so here we go. We're going to attempt to derive the sine rule. I'll put a pretty orange line under it so that it feels a lot more comforting when you see it on the board in the background. And be green too. All right, so here we go. Let's draw a triangle, any triangle. Definitely not a right angle triangle. And the trick we do straight away is we actually cut our any old triangle into two right angle triangles. So we've got two little right angles down there. And we need some labels. So big A for angle means that side's little a. Big B for angle means that side is B. Now normally you go, well that's length C down here, but we've kind of split C up. What we do is we take a chunk out of, because C would be all the way along the bottom, we take a little chunk out called X. And in turn the length here has to be this entire length C take away X. Think about that. The length there is C, take x. So we can label this c take away x. Now what we do about now is we define this perpendicular height there as h, h for height. And I'm going to come up with two expressions here for h. So expression 1 and expression 2. In the first one, I'm going to look at this angle A. Opposite angle A is a H, and the hypotenuse there is B. So I'm looking purely at this triangle here, and if you think about which trig function involves opposite and hypotenuse, I'm hoping you'll come up with sine. So you may recall sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So what I'm going to do there is, well, I'm looking at this triangle here. I can use sine now because I've cut it down to that right angle triangle. I'm going to go sine A. That angle is opposite, which is H, over hypotenuse, which is B. Now remember my goal here was to get H equals something. If I multiply both sides by B, I will indeed get an expression for H that looks like this. H is B sine A. I'm now going to do exactly the same with the second triangle over here. Again, from the perspective of angle B, H is opposite, A is hypotenuse. So again, I'm going to use sine. Sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse, except this stage, at this stage, the angle is B, opposite is H, hypotenuse is A. Again, I want an expression for H, so I'm going to multiply both sides by A, I get H is A sine B. Isn't that lovely? I've got two equal expressions for the height H. All right. The trick at this point 
is to equate our equations 1 and 2 because they are both equal to h. So if h is equal to b sine a and h is equal to a sine b, then b sine a equals a sine b. So we can write b sine a equals a sine b. Now to get the exact form of the sine rule that you know and love over here, what we do is we divide both sides by both a and b. So if I divide this by b, I just lose the b. But when I divide it by a, I'm left with a as the denominator. Same trick here, dividing by a, b. When I divide by a, it just cancels out. And I'm left with sine b over b. And thus, yay, we derive the sine rule. And you can put it in a beautiful cloud and you can colour it in and highlight it if you want. All right. So that's one of our two rules done. I have derived the sine rule in front of us. Now the cos rule. The cos rule is actually slightly trickier. Are you happy to hear that or not happy to hear that? I'm not sure what the vibe is right now. Possibly that we should get this guy institutionalised. Anyway, so here we go. It feels terrible rubbing off that good work. I hope you really enjoyed that. I hope you know. I even got a new set of you know, whiteboard markers that I, I pinched somehow out of our supplies just for this. Isn't that awesome? Anyway, so here we go. We've derived the sine rule. Let's derive the cos rule. Now, I was just in tutoring, annoying people while sitting there working this out myself. I'm going to use a slightly different lettering system to, I think, what's in the textbook, because I want it to come out like that. I want the exact lettering to come out that way. And that, that's actually a little bit more fiddly. Um, but anyway, here we go. I am going to slightly cheat sheet here with what I had, um, what I was working on in tutoring. It, it, it looks a bit messy. Um, I hope, hope you don't mind. All right. So what we're going to do, and my particular choice of which letters go where here is admittedly influenced by wanting the letters to go that way at the end. So again, I've drawn a vertical line down and split any triangle into two right angle triangles. So that's going to help us a lot. The particular lettering I'm going to, lettering I'm going to start with here is C. So that being angle C, side C would be over here. Same on the other side, angle B and side B leaving that being angle A up there, but we won't really mess with that. And down the bottom, again, this would be side, uh, this would be side A down here, because we have sides B and C already. Um, but we're going to do that trick again, where we have a little X in here, and we have, look, the length there has to be A take away X, because A is the full length, A take X, will leave us with the length here. Now this time, this, this one actually involves two uses of Pythagoras. When we were doing the proof of the sine rule, it involved two uses of, of you know, sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. But here, we're going to play with Pythagoras. So, here goes nothing. All right. Um, we'll label this H again. And I might label that triangle one and triangle two. So if I look at Pythagoras from triangle one, essentially it says that this side squared plus this side squared has to equal this side squared. So that is a take away x squared plus h squared equals c squared. I'm going to get two expressions for h squared this time. That's the key to working all this out. So here, I want that to be h squared equals something. So I need to take away the a take away x squared. So it'll be h squared is c squared take away a take x squared. There's an expression for h squared on that side. So that was the first triangle. Now I'm going to look at the second triangle. So I'll call that Pythagoras 2. And... 
This time it's going to be x squared plus h squared equals b squared, the b being on the hypotenuse. So we'll do that. We'll go, um, oops, sorry, x squared plus h squared is b squared. Again, I want an expression for the h squared. So I've got to take x squared from both sides. h squared will be b squared take x squared. Right, so I've got two expressions for h squared. If h squared equals this expression and h squared equals this expression, then we can say that this expression equals this expression. We can get rid of the h squared. So I call that 1, I'll call that 2. Right. And we're essentially going to set 1 is equal to 2. We're going to get something that, and I'm just trying to think of which way I'm going to write this. I'm going to write uh, this side first. c squared take away a take x squared equals b squared take x squared. So that expression equals that expression. All right, to try and get some sense out of this, what do you think we might do first? I'm going to suggest expanding. All right, so if I was to expand that, that's a take x times a take x sitting in there. And if you think about that expansion, and we have to remember to take away everything that you get from that expansion, so it's a little bit tricky. I'm going to get an a squared, and it's going to be take away that a squared. I'm going to get ax twice, it'll be a negative 2, um, negative 2ax, but it's take away a negative 2ax, it'll end up being positive 2ax, and here I've got negative x times negative x, which is positive x squared, but then it's all taken away back here anyway, so you'll end up with a take away x squared. At this point, there's actually uh, a takeaway x squared on both sides. What that means is if I add x squared to both sides, they're just going to cancel out, right? So think, add x squared to both sides, cleans it up a little bit. That gives me c squared take a squared plus 2ax equals b squared. Now at this point, you may, you may notice from the rule that c squared is sitting by itself on the side. I'm actually just going to rearrange it so it's, got, it's in the form of c squared equals something. So to do that, I have to add a squared and take away 2ax from both sides. So it leaves just c squared here. Remember, I just want c squared on this side. So that'll give me c squared equals, I've added a squared, so it'll be a squared plus b squared take 2ax. Now that's not far off the formula, but we've still got this x thing in. x doesn't belong in here. When we had our original triangle, it only had a, b and c in it. There's no x. x is some random thing we've defined. We can't have x in the final formula. Thankfully, there's a way around that. And I'd like us to return to our original picture here, and I want you to look at this triangle on the right. Now, there's actually a way of, of getting an expression for x that we can use. Now, think, we know c and we know b, and we want an expression involving x. From the perspective of c, if we're looking purely at this right angle triangle, x is sitting in the adjacent position, b is sitting in the hypotenuse position. Since it's a right angle triangle, we can use our sine, cos, and tan. Now, in this case, um, what trig function has adjacent hypotenuse? Cos. So I can write cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. In this case, we were looking at the angle C, adjacent X, and the hypotenuse is B. From that, I can write an expression for X. I can get X equals something. Multiply both sides by B, you get X is equal to B cos C. That's what we're going to use to finish this one off down the bottom. So once we're at this point, we go, but x is equal to b cos c. So I can put b cos c in the place of x. That gives us c squared is a squared plus b squared take 2ab cos c. Hey! Isn't that beautiful? So 
again, you're welcome to make a beautiful cloud and make much celebration of that. Well, what do we need to do now? A couple of examples of actually using these formulas. That's what's left. So let's try and get that knocked off so it's still well and truly within one lesson's worth of watching. Um, though I admit there's a fair amount of content going on here. So, where do I put the eraser? I kind of don't want to rub that off just yet. It's, it, it really upsets me, the whole idea of doing it. All right. So I might do the sign rule example first. So let's draw a triangle. I'm going to draw any triangle. And I'm going to make up numbers. What numbers should I make up? Essentially, I'm going to do this one. So I need two angles. I'll make that 59 degrees. I'll make this here um, 48 degrees. And I need one agreeable side. So I might make that 8.2 kilometers. And we'll make this our unknown. All right? So thus, this is our sign rule example. Right. So as mentioned here, if we have two angles and one side, we can find the other side. But let's start with our rule. Now, in all my examples, I'm going to do algebraic manipulation first before I put numbers in it. I know that some of you are probably more comfortable with putting numbers in first. At a maths B in a university level, I really want you to be comfortable with moving the symbols around. Um, it's, it's not just for nerd cred. There's, it's really, really powerful, and you just have to believe me with that. And you know, I know you're probably not driven too much to power at this stage in your life, but you know, it's really cool even if you're not attracted to the power, okay? So you've got to go with the symbolic stuff where you can. Um, and I will show you how to do it symbolically here. So here, sine A over A is sine B over B. The thing that strikes me straight away when writing that formula is I don't even have labels on that diagram. Let's put some labels on it. So we have angle A here, so I'll call it angle A, which means that'd be side A because it's opposite it. And we, use, we refer to angle B in the formula, so let's make that angle B and side B there as well. Now, out of all of that, we want to work out A. So I'm going to rejig this formula so that I get A equals something. Then I'm going to put the values in. Yes, as discussed, you might put the values in first and then work it out, but the better way is if you can do the symbolic stuff first. I want to show you a fraction trick that you may or may not have seen before. To make that A be on the top, you can actually swap the numerator and denominators of, of your fraction on either side. Very useful trick in solving equations. So first up, I write it like this. If you're not sure about that rule, sit there and play with it. Put some numbers in it and see that, yeah, if you do, if you do swap your numerator and denominator, that always works. It's, it's quite cool. All right, so again, Let's think back here. I want to get A equals something. So to get A equals something, I need to get rid of sine A. So I'm going to multiply both sides by sine A. And it's going to look a little messy. Right, so it's going to end up with A is B sine A over sine B. But the beautiful thing now is I can just put the values in. I can read off my labels and put them in. So B was 8.2, and big A is 48 degrees over sine B, and B is 59 degrees. I also note that you know, you've been introduced to radians lately. You want to make sure you're not in radians mode when you do this, or it's all going to be very upsetting. I'm in degrees mode. That's good. So let's do this. We're going to go 8.2 times sine 48 over sine 59 equals yay all right so it's telling me 
that A is 7.11 when I round it. So 7.11 and our units were kilometres. Right. So that's an example of using the sine rule to find a side. So that's our two angles plus a side to find another side. Yay. Yeah. So now I'm going to move on to cos rule examples. Uh, and that'll, uh, that'll take us through today. It looks like I'm at 30 minutes already, so I don't want to go too much longer. Also, I might like to go home occasionally. Um, all right. So let's do cos rule examples. Now, there's two different types I can do. I will do both. Uh, we'll do the three sides first. In fact, I might do that over this side. I changed my mind. That one uh, requires a, uh, a bit more mucking around first. So, um, yeah, no, no, do the two sides and the included angle first. So, here's a triangle. Cos rule example one. Can you still see me over there? Yeah. Okay, yeah, you can still see me over there. Uh, here we go. Again, any random triangle, and I'm going to do two sides and their included angles. So 18.3 centimetres, I'll make that 17.4 centimetres, and the angle on there will make 38 degrees. And we want to find the third side. All right, so this is actually this case here that we're doing. Two sides, their included angle, the angle that joins two sides, we're trying to find the third side. So I'm going to quote the magnificent cos rule here. A squared plus B squared take two AB cos C. Better put some labels on it. So we have the big angle C, it's the only C, that means this is side C. And the other two sides, doesn't really matter what we label it as long as we're consistent. All right, if C squared equals this, what's C itself going to be? How do I get C by itself when I have a C squared? Like Pythagoras, we take the square root. So often I will write straight away this line, where I've just taken the square root of everything. Because at that point, it's ready for me to put in the numbers. So down here, I'm going to move down here because it's going to be big. A was 17.4, B was 18.3, A was 17.4, B was 